In this episode of Working Man Games, we're going to be talking about NASCAR. Got laid off from his job, not a penny to his name. Don't he make some extra money playing some shitty game? Call him Riley, you can call him the working man. NASCAR! 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 NASCAR, also pronounced NASCAR, or turn left the game. Oh boy, this is the part where I gotta act like I give a shit about NASCAR and tell you it's history. So here it is, and yes, I'm reading off a cue card. William Henry Gaddy, Big Bill Frantz, the stock car racer who organized his first race in 1936. It took place on the stretch of the beach at Daytona. A bunch of moonshiners got drunk and started driving in circles. Almost 17 million dollars in prize money. So basically, NASCAR is a franchise, and what does every good franchise need? Every good franchise needs very bad video games. And boy, does NASCAR have that. Not necessarily bad video games, but games. They have games. I mean, how can you, like, how can you screw up cars going in a circle? How can you screw that up? They screw it up. And I'm going to be honest with you, making a video about NASCAR games is going to be hard for me. Because I'm going to have to throw every trick in the book out on this one because uh, i got to think of just about any little bitty minor joke I can make out of the same thing over and over. Monotonous, isn't it? Like that. And how will we do that? Well, we'll start with the oldies and work our way up. Here's Bill Elliott's NASCAR challenge for the NES, or as they call it in my neck of the woods, the regular Nintendo. You know, because there's a Super. There was a couple of different versions of this. There was an MS-DOS version, and then there was the NES version. I tried to get the MS-DOS version to work, but... <laughs> so we're gonna see the NES version instead. Oh look, it's that company that used to be cool, but now everybody hates it. Come on me. And it is then that I remember that my dad is going to watch this. Chevrolet Lumina. I have not heard that name in years. Them cars used to be everywhere, especially NASCAR. But I will say the real life Chevy Lumina, it was very underwhelming. The Lumina was so uncool, my great grandmother had one. Look how good I am at this game. I'm stumbling at the name entry. Also, listen to that horrible music. It sounds like that loop that plays on the Back to the Future game. Which, by the way, is a sped up version of Power of Love. But I digress, and I undress, but we won't be seeing that. I like how there's completely made up NASCAR names on here. Look here, T-Bone Henry, Doc Jones, Lamar Stevens, Amore Jackson, Buddy Kiss Jr. They sound like blues singers. And come on, Amore Jackson. When the moon hits you, I always... Let's play the damn game already. Drivers, start your engine. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. The hello? Huh? Hello? I can't hear you. Look, yeah, hey. Look, you couldn't have called me at a, at a more terrible time right... Yeah. No, dude, I'm trying to drive, all right? As a matter of fact, I'm driving in a pretty bad traffic right now. Uh, could, could we call later? Could, could we talk about this later? Gee, what? No, I, I don't care. We'll kill it. I can't come step on it for you. No, come on. No, I am... I'm driving. Uh, look, I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up. All right, bye. Well, as you can see, this has got pretty damn good frame rate for a first-person view NES game, but that doesn't make it any better. Look how there's like an invisible wall here to the left. You don't actually go into the grass. You just hit a invisible wall. As for the wall on the right side, doesn't kill you. So I guess there's that. 
Ah, my favorite soundtrack from my favorite band, The Mosquitoes, from their album Buzzing in Your Fucking Ear. You think this noise is something right now? Wait till we get over here without any cars, just by ourselves. You know, I had a cat that did that once. I had to shoot it. And oh, wow, I'm out of gas. The gauges are not for decoration. Man, even T-Bone beat me. But we're not done with the NES yet. Oh, no, we're not. They had to have a movie tie-in, too. And now, what movie is it that's a NASCAR and a movie tie-in? Did you say Cannonball Run? No. Days of Thunder, baby. Let me level with you because you probably don't know. Days of Thunder was a movie from around 1990 that was about NASCAR racing and had Tom Cruise and Robert Duvall as the main stars. Now this could have just as easily been sold as just a plain Jane NASCAR game, but no, this had to have a movie license on it. So who made this game? Well, it was distributed by Mindscape Software, who's known for shitty games, or at least distributing them, but it was created by Argonaut Software? Okay, help me out, Wiki. What is this? Argonaut Software is best known for... Star Fox? Uh, you mean that Star Fox? The Star Fox that doesn't suck? Uh, yeah, apparently so. And apparently, they were involved in the development of the Super FX chip that made all those cool 3D graphics. So these same people are the ones that made Days of Thunder. Now I'm interested. Interested in freaking knowing how you fuck up a NASCAR game this bad? Oh! My god! This game is actually so broken, there's absolutely no way in hell that you can even win a race. Not one. Not even the first one. Let's start with the acceleration. It gets, it gets up to a point, and then it stops. You see both of the gauges red line out, and that's as fast as the car will go. Now, this would be fine. But the deceleration is where everything goes completely downhill. Because, and I, I, I don't know how to describe this. There is no deceleration. To make the car slow down, you have to hit the brakes. You don't let go of the accelerator and wait for it to coast a little bit, which is what, which is what would be nice and what would make this game a lot easier to play. But no, you can't let go of the let go of the accelerator and slow down the car you have to hit the brakes to slow it down and push the accelerator to make it speed up there's there's no deceleration it is so weird and if you let go of the brake just a little bit and then don't touch anything it will like enter some kind of weird cruise control mode where it's stuck at a certain mile per hour a certain speed it makes absolutely no sense it's like driving a boat or something on another subject did you know that did you know that 23 percent of the uk do not own a car that like there's 23 percent of an entire nation that do not own a vehicle of any kind I, and i know that's true because they all made this fucking game that is not how physics work but I have not even shown you the worst part of Days of Thunder on the NES. No, 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 no. You haven't seen the game-breaking part yet. Now, for you to stay in the race and be able to finish in any place at all, you've got to stop at the pit stop of some time because you do run out of gas, your tires do go bald, and your engine does get weak. So you have to stop at the pit stop. And this is where the scat smacks the lasco. First of all, you think you would just go into pit row. No. Why would you even think that? If you drove into pit row, you would just keep on driving and that would be it. You'd just drive right by it for no reason at all. You can't just automatically stop. That would be a good game. Think you can just slow down a little bit and go into pit row? No, still ain't worth it. Still ain't going in there. No way, no how. Then you finally figure, okay, what if I just fucking stop? If I stop into pit row, can I go? Here's another thing you'll find out really quick. You can't stop. You just can't stop in the middle of the road. The game won't let you. 
you 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 slow down to like 40 50 miles an hour and then it goes into that weird cruise control mode so i wasted a good few laps trying to get into pit row just to show you this because i wanted to see what pit row was like and when i finally got there this is where i started throwing my hat at random objects oh oh this was god awful okay you're gonna hear a lot of this weird buzzing noise during me doing all this little shit you see right here with these little dudes yeah you control the pit crew you gotta jack up the car you gotta put the tires off put new tires in you gotta freaking get the gas guy to do the gas get the engine guy to do the engine now here's the thing that the game doesn't tell you everything okay let me see if i could break this down for you there are two people assigned to the jack, and there is one person assigned to the tires. One person on the top right is assigned to the mechanic, and the person on the bottom left is the gas guy. Every member of this pit crew can only do one thing, and for some reason, one of them does the same thing. And no, you cannot jack the car up both ways. What goes wrong here is there is no way to figure out who is the tire person who's the jack person and who does what or where you're supposed to do it or when you're supposed to do it the game does not tell you instead of coming out on top we all look like monkeys fucking a football and why would it it's an nes game the fuck you console the console that says you figure the shit out you know those nike posters that have the shoe and then above it it says just do it well, imagine the same poster, but the shoe is in pieces and the poster says, you do it. That is the Nintendo Entertainment System in a nutshell. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's check back in with the pit crew. Well, they're still trying to figure out what the fuck they're supposed to do. The game seems to be extremely specific on where you press the A button, like where the character is at when you change the tire or try to change the tire. Because if you're not in that very exact spot, it's going to make this buzzing noise. In fact, it's the buzzing noise you've been hearing throughout this whole freaking pit crew thing. <laughs> Ain't that lovely? Sounds like two horseflies 69ing on a dead cow. I never did get my engine fixed, neither. I couldn't figure it out. He's right there, but I couldn't figure it out, so I just finally said, screw this crap. Well, ma'am, I really don't know what to tell you. I took a left, then I turned, turned left again, and I went straight for a little while, and I turned left one more time. Now I know the last thing you want to see right now is more of this round and round and round and round and round. Oh my god, we're at the 12 and a half minute mark with this shit. I need to wrap this up. I finished last because the pit crew thing sucks and the game is broken the end. Also, I finished 8th place somehow. I don't know how- Whoa! 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 I didn't just see that. Somebody's name- Somebody's name was- There it is! Brian Toomer! Brian Toomer! <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> Next freaking game. Kyle Petty! No fear, we uh-oh, we're getting into Super Nintendo territory now, boys. Now, this game's interesting in that it's not exactly a licensed NASCAR game, but it does have a NASCAR driver's name on it. It's more of a generic right stock car racing game. I decided to put it on here because it's actually good. I had a fun time playing this game. It's what the Days of Thunder game should have been, basically. You, you can tell by the graphics and everything and the way the game works, the interface and everything. And since it wasn't NASCAR, they could take a few liberties, like you got Nitro, and you've got a lot more than just oval tracks to go on. This, this uh, track in particular has got a lot of twists and turns on it. There's a bit of a drifting mechanic to how you uh, turn the car. But after you get it mastered, it's really not that bad. Now that was a qualifying run. When you race against other cars, all hell breaks loose. Everybody's bumping into each other because the road is so thin, so, so skinny. And there's so many cars on the road at one time. It, it gets really intense and, and fun too. And when you do crash, it doesn't slow you down that much. So you don't feel like you're, you're dead after that, you know? I actually managed to win a race on this one, too. That really made me feel good about myself. <laughs>
And when we got that all there, I, I want to thank uh, I want to thank sponsors. I want to thank Chevrolet. I want to thank Viagra. I want to thank uh, 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 C Bond and uh, Gold Bond, both of them. And uh, I want to thank everybody that helped me with the Mountain Dew Baja Blast Chevrolet. Also, you can make your own custom track and race on it, which is kind of cool. It's kind of limited, but it is Super Nintendo. I just thought that was kind of neat. Now, of course, I was extremely grown up and mature about it. So now we've come to the 3D games in the NASCAR franchise. I've got a good many to show you this time, and we'll try to get through them as fast as I can, because I just realized, as long-winded as I am, we've gone through like 15, 20 minutes of just three games. So if you've made it through my rambling this far, congratulations! You have nothing to do in life. All right, here's the skinny on the NASCAR 3D games. So uh, there were three main companies that made the 3D NASCAR games. Monster Games, Evil Assholes, and Papyrus. Papyrus did the games called the NASCAR Racing Series. Some were good, some were bad, some were very 90s, including the very first one, which is this one on the PS1 and the PC. I should also mention that the soundtrack is freaking awesome on these NASCAR racing games because Skid fucking Row did the music, which is probably why PC Gamer called it simply the best racing game sim ever created. Does your game have Skid Row? I, no, I don't think so. Yeah, you can't argue with tunes like that. But how's the game? Well, it's a game. That's about all I can say about it. It's not bad. In fact, I'm not going to call it bad. It's just nothing special. You know, it, it, it feels like a product of the time. Like, like there's no reason to really pick up this game instead of one of the newer NASCAR games. It feels like a really bad Daytona USA is what it feels like. And oh my god, is this game loud. I had to turn it way down so you could hear me. The Skid Row soundtrack just sounds like because of the volume. I kept spinning out and running into the wall and losing my place. And finally, I just got tired of this damn game and just started making my own rules. I will say, as far as I know, this is the only NASCAR game that uses the old Chevy Lumina bodies. Like, not long after that, they changed to all those round bubble-shaped bodies. Ah, Jeff Gordon. If you want to make rednecks mad, talk about Jeff Gordon. Good or bad. All right, so now I'm going to try the simulation race mode. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but we'll give it a go and see what happens. Well, all right, let's rock the... What? Huh? The cars are stopped. Are we in pit row? What the hell is going on? I am really confused right now. The music does not fit how I feel right now. Okay, a couple of cars just passed by. I don't know why. I'm scared. Screw it. He's going. I'm just going to go. It's not even showing any places. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just driving. I'm just running into people. I'm just crashing. What the hell? Hey, that looks like the Days of Thunder car right there almost. All right, I figured out what was wrong. But apparently there's a practice session, a qualify session, and then the actual race. Now I'm on the actual race. Now let's see if I can win this bitch. I'm in third, I'm in trouble. Oh shit. That shit knocked me all the way down to last. it. Hey, I wonder how much you can bust up these cars. <laughs> Apparently you can damage a wheel. Kamikaze! Oh. oh my god, I'm stuck on him! We're stuck together, dude! <laughs> Donuts! Yeah, this is how you drive around in circles right here! <laughs> Next game on the list is another Papyrus game, NASCAR Legends, which is a spin-off of their other game, NASCAR Racing 3 on the PC. NASCAR Legends should have been awesome because of the fact that you can play as the old school muscle cars from the 60s and 70s. But unfortunately it falls short and just feels very mediocre. I will say this though, I really enjoy the drivers they have on here. There's one particular driver you can play as that really speaks to me. Yeah, this guy right here. Let me show you. 
da 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 You see, I thought the game wasn't good enough, so I made it awesome. Because I'm an awesomist. I think everything should be awesome. I'm not a racist either. I'm a racer. See, I got a name, a number, a biography, and everything. All the way from Deliveranceville, born on 11-23-90, and racing on the behalf of Trevor Phillips Enterprises. Stuart K. Riley was born on the wagon of a traveling show, and his mother would dance for the money they would throw. Papa would do whatever he could. And look, with one click, it goes from a Dodge Charger into a Plymouth Superbird. Yay! Bet the General Lee would have snagged on that wing a whole bunch of times through them trees. I am running past these sons of bitches like they're standing still. Nobody beats a general, baby. Woo! Last place again because of one damn crash. I am so fucking tired of this bullsh- Folks, I think the general's gonna get a facelift it didn't ask for. Just stay in the car. Tow truck is coming. Looks like that motor is history. You ever seen that game Desert Bus? Where if you get off the road, you're stuck there and you gotta wait for a tow truck to pick you up and then it takes you all the way back. This is basically that and just like on Desert Bus, that tow truck is invisible. Hang on, they got you hooked up now. You gotta love that sideways action. There's no way this is getting fixed. Now let's play a track without the nose cone and wing so it looks like a pure D general. How about some authentic chase music too? Yeah, that makes the game a lot easier. I would like to take this time to bring up that there was a TV show about NASCAR about this time, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere around there. It was done by a company some of you youngins may have heard of, Saban Entertainment. And the people that did the uh, voiceover for it were Ocean Entertainment, as in the same Ocean Entertainment that did the uh, English voiceovers for Dragon Ball Z, something else you youngins know about. In fact, one of the voice actors is Reno Romano, who played Louis Sarah on Resident Evil 4. You remember him? A little rough, don't you think? Aha, 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 they went there. By there, I mean Cabela's. I'll have a do a review of the show one day because it looks like the same people who did all those like weird shows that was on Fox Kids like Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century, which I can't believe is a thing. But back to video games. Let's talk about NASCAR Heat. NASCAR Heat was the game series that Monster Games did for NASCAR. If you've never heard of Monster Games, you're excused, but you'll be surprised what they've worked on. Not only have they worked on NASCAR Heat, they've also worked on one test drive game and since 2009 have actually worked on some pretty big name stuff. Excite Bots, Trick Racing, uh, okay, that maybe not not. Excite Bike, World Rally, Pilot Wings Resort, Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. So yeah, that's uh, some pretty big name stuff on the 3DS and Wii, and the Wii U, and Wii U, 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 U and Wii Wear, and Wario Wii Wear. Oh man, there's so many of those Wiis. Monster Games must have had a big ass budget for this because they were able to get some of the big wigs to actually show up and do cutscenes. Even Richard Petty and Dale Sr. How's that? How's that? Say how's that? I missed that. <laughs> a king here can do it better. Now apparently NASCAR Heat's big claim to fame is the Beat the Heat mode. If you've ever played Gran Turismo, it's a lot like that. You have these little trials that the game wants you to go through. We'll crank up the heat a bit for your next challenge. You'll be running at NASCAR's fastest track, Talladega Super Speedway, where you'll have to master not only turns three and four, but also the tri-oval and then across the finish line. Let's take a look at what it'll take to beat this challenge. For the bronze trophy, you'll need to beat 31.0 seconds. 30.5 will earn the silver. Going for the gold will require a blazing 30 flat. Your car will be at full speed all alone heading into turn three. Good luck. Well, all right, let's see what's so dang fancy and cool and neat about NASCAR heat. Oh, I just rhymed. Well, let me start off by saying, oh my God, 90s Pontiacs were ugly. Hell, 2000s Pontiacs were ugly too. It just They just uh, kind of pushed around the Play-Doh a little bit to make it a little more round. 
So apparently I'm supposed to go on these turns as fast as humanly possible. Now I don't know how I'm really going to... Oh, uh, it's over. Okay. And I barely passed, which tells me that I have to play this little thing over and over and over before I can get a gold. Look, if I want to drive down the two same stretches of road over and over and over, I could do that in real life, and at the end, I get to see a pawn shop where I get to look at guns and guitars and all kind of cool shit. I'm out on this. NASCAR 98 Collector's Edition. Oh, cool. Look at all the old cars on here. Is this going to have muscle cars, too? Oh, damn, Molly Hatchet. This ought to be good. And we got an old Richard Petty Charger. Oh, man, I am so looking forward to this. Dude, look at the old Plymouth Fury. Oh, shit. This game's going to be cool. Oh, uh, what? Did the music just skip? Wait a minute. That looks just like a plain Jane NASCAR vehicle. How do I change the car? How do I get a Fury? How do I get a Charger? Come on, man. Hell, I'm looking at these cars and... I'm not seeing any classics. I'm not seeing any old school cars. What the hell, dude? This is like clickbait that's specifically targeted at Stuart K. Riley here. What the heck, man? Yes, I'm afraid to tell you there are no classic cars in this, despite the fact they're on the cover art, they're on the title screen, they're on the menu screen, but they're not in the game. And yes, yeah, the music is skipping. I just checked the disc. Yes, it's fine. I would like to take this time to tell you that this is the first game we're looking at that's made by EA, also known as Evil Assholes. Well, maybe the game's good. Actually, no, it's kind of boring. There isn't even anything funny to say about it. It's just NASCAR. Oh, hell. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to do that. I hit Earnhardt. I hit Earnhardt, man. In this house, we don't hit Earnhardt. Man, forget that game. Let's do another one. NASCAR Thunder 2002. <sighs> NASCAR 2000 on the N64. I'll play as the Valvoline car because I have a friend who works at a Valvoline lube place. That's too bad. He really needed a good finish today. <sighs> this one sucks too. Oh shit, that's Mean Streak by Y&T. I love that song. Okay, the video is almost over. I'm so glad you're still here. Are you? I'll pretend you are, because it makes me feel better. So after drudging over all these freaking horrible NASCAR games, just boring as fuck, I have a good one to show you. Dirt to Daytona on the PS2. Man, when I bought this, I could not put it down. There's lots of fun and lots of modes and lots of good stuff to be had in this game. Look, right. trucks. You can race trucks on this game. And the game mechanics and the driving feels actually enjoyable. It doesn't feel like you're out of control all the time or too in control. It feels like you're driving a freaking vehicle. And that's not all. Look at this. Dirt track. You can race Monte Carlos on a dirt track. And you can feel the slipperiness of the dirt and mud as you're driving across the curvy curvies. If you're wondering what that was just now, it was that damn beat the heat mode. It's got that on here. This is the NASCAR heat people that made this game. There's also modifieds, which are these weird open wheel chassis cars that aren't too much like sprint cars. Now, if you want to get into some real backwoods, grassroots racing than modifieds and sprint cars. That's where it's at. Dirt Track 2. Now there's only one other thing that could make this game any better. Cheat codes. Okay, there's either an increase of ground clearance or a decrease in car size. I'm not exactly sure here. Almost look like some of those remote control RC cars. What'd be even better is... Oh, oh my. Oh. <laughs> what was... What is that? What the heck is going on here? I mean, oh, hello. I'm throwing snowballs, snowball bombs, snow bombs. This is how the game was intended to be played. Anybody who says otherwise is a moron. I wonder if I can knock this giant dude down. Yes, yes. <laughs> Look at him. If there was ever a sight to behold, it's this. This game is wonderful. 
and I thank myself for buying it, and I thank my coffee people who give me money to buy games for allowing me to buy it. I mean, look at this. Look how beautiful. The running man has been running like a top all day long. He's just, he's just been in perfect shape, running a good lap, good solid lap every time he gets on the track. Now, it gets hard for any of the boys to even keep up with him, even with all the mortar bombs being thrown at him and everything. You know what I mean? Rejoice, for there are only two games left. <gasps> what is this? Old school Plymouth Superbird, Pro Elite, big ass blower, <laughs> big tires and shit. Look at this. Listen to that music. Front end loader. You could drive a front end loader in a NASCAR game. A souped up front end loader. A sprint car. Oh my goodness. What is this? Hello, NASCAR Rumble. What is this? A chicken truck. Okay, I gotta drive the chicken truck. Mardi Gras, oh, this is a game after my heart. God, I hope it's good. Raging Cajun, oh wow. Okay, I'm gonna cut the act and tell you this game is awesome. It's Mario Kart meets NASCAR. And let me tell you something, I'm so glad it is. It's got little power-ups that let you do shit like nitro and knock other cars out. You see that twister? That's a tornado. You could get a tornado as a power-up and throw cars everywhere. Most all the cars have the same top speed unless you go for the higher tier. That's what that pro and elite and rookie is about. So um, the top speeds are pretty much the same on all the cars. So it's all about who has better driving skills and who can throw the most power-ups at who. It makes it a really balanced race and also makes it kind of challenging. But it's so much fun, you don't care about the challenge. NASCAR Rumble is good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Go get it before it's expensive. Now, basically what I'm trying to tell you is that NASCAR Rumble is a very good game for a NASCAR game. In fact, it's a good game for a game for that matter. I mean, uh, shoot. I mean, it goes for kind of the Mario Kart thing, but um, because of that, it like it doesn't suck. It's not the same thing over and over. It's not the same ovals and circles and shit that you do over and over and over on freaking every other NASCAR game ever. So it feels like a, a decent, fun, interactive racing game, but that's not NASCAR. And NASCAR is all about repetitiveness. Kids look at NASCAR and they think, repetitive, not fun. So, what did the people that made NASCAR Rumble do? I will show you. What they did was they took NASCAR Rumble, put it on the PlayStation 2, got rid of the NASCAR licensing, and made what I think is one of the most underrated racing games of all time. Rumble racing, y'all. This game is a masterpiece, y'all. Combining a whole bunch of ideas to make this one unique game is just awesome. Look at this. You've got stunts you can do by holding down a button and pushing up or down. And by doing that, you can get nitro. And you can get so many nitros that you can just have nitro through the whole damn race. It kind of reminds me of those skateboard games that used to be real popular during the PlayStation 1 era. And then you've got the power-ups from NASCAR Rumble, even the Tornado, but none of that pesky NASCAR licensing. So you've just got this original mishmash of race car greatness. You also have Jess Harnell, who used to do Wacko from Animaniacs as the announcer. Making a charge. They shot past you faster than snot out of an iguana. 
Roger. You're clear for landing. You made him stain his skivvies. Major calling on line team. DJ, just take the 5 to the 105 to the 10 to the 134. I'll be lucky to catch you next century. I'll crisp my lettuce and bite my bacon. You are the turkey in the straw. What are you up to? Hey, open up. I need me a souvenir. What do you have to lose? Faster, you good-for-nothing video game junkie. Shut the fuck up. Okay, it's not perfect. The main thing that really hurts the game is it has a bit of a difficulty. Uh, redneck rocket. Because of the fact that the cars are so balanced and everybody has the same top speed, that makes it super imperative that you never crash. Or if you do crash, it better be a small minor one and you better get as much nitro as you possibly can because there is little room for error. It's not impossible to win a race, it's just you have to work for it. When this game was reviewed by uh, magazines, everybody gave it eight, eight and a half, and a lot of people talked about the difficulty, saying that that's what held the game back. Despite it being one of my favorite racing games of all time, I still categorize it as a game that could have been good if. And it's amazing to think it exists because of a NASCAR game. As a matter of fact, the developers of this were XEA employees that you now know as Visceral Games, the same Visceral Games that made Dead Space. I believe Visceral Games has closed down since then, but um, I really wish they would have stuck around to at least make another Rumble Racing. I would really like to see this franchise rebooted and tried again. It would be safe to do it because it doesn't have a legacy. It's not some legendary franchise, so if it does plummet, flop, or whatever, it's no big loss. But either way, I felt I would never get a chance to talk about Rumble Racing unless I talked about NASCAR Rumble and unless I talked about NASCAR games. So, there you go. So now we've reached the final lap of the Endless Road. And... NASCAR games are done! Whew! Well, that was a long video, wasn't it? Man, now I gotta work on the next one. What? The next one? I ain't decided yet. What? But look like I already have everything planned out. You know, I'm so sick of your sh Folks, tune in next time to see what the working man gets himself into this time. Also, this might be a hint. Y'all come back now. So now we come to the 3D games in the NASCAR franchise. Uh, I only got a few to show you, and we'll go through them really quick. So now we're going to the 3D. Now right, here we are in the B room. B room meaning bedroom. And uh, this is where all the... We're capturing recording physical game magic happens. See, I got a piss three and a shitload of light. I got a piss two. No big surprise, I do a lot of my work in the bedroom. What do you expect? I, I don't have a studio. Why would I have a studio? I'm a working man. Easter egg for the video. This is a Hot Rod magazine from November of 1990, my birth year. So, just thought I'd bring that up. It's cool. It's got a Marlboro uh, advertisement on the back. You don't see many cigarette commercials or ads anymore. Ooh, bulletproof shifter. I've been noticing that my shifter's not bulletproof. Hey, y'all watch my crap, all right? I got a Twitter, that's I'm Stuart K. Riley. The official Working Man Games is Working Man Game 1, I think. And uh, we got coffee, K-O-F-I. That's where you donate money to me, and I go buy video games so I can make reviews for you guys. Again, you give me money, I buy games, I make videos, you profit somehow. Just do it. You won't regret it, and I won't go hungry. Bye.